Welcome back to Heroes of the Faith, a show where we are inspired by the lives of the saints so that we can become saints ourselves. I'm your host, Father Isaac Longworth, and when I first went to seminary to study how to become a priest, there was a lot of stuff that was new to me. I had to learn a whole new way of of entering into prayer. I had to learn uh, how the classes at seminary worked and how to prioritize my time. I even had to learn how to run ministry events, how to speak at retreats, how to pray with people, all these different kinds of things that I had never really had to do up to that point. And so one of the first things I did is I became friends with some of the older seminarians in the house, and they began to mentor me in how to be a better seminarian. They wouldn't have used those words, but when I was stuck on something, I would go up to them and ask them a question. I would get advice from them. When I messed up on something or or didn't do something the way I was supposed to, they would gently come alongside me and say, hey, you know, try this next time. I find that this really works for me. And over time, I became a much better seminarian, a much better brother in the house because of their mentoring. And as the years went on in seminary, because I was in seminary for nine years, as the years went on, I started to notice that younger seminarians that were joining were starting to approach me for that same kind of mentoring relationship. They were asking me many of the same questions that I had first had when I came to seminary. And so I had been coached, I had been mentored by guys before me, and now I was playing the role as a mentor for the guys coming after me. And I think that that is a really good example, a really good uh, way of showing how the Christian life is supposed to be lived out. That we're supposed to have mentors that lead us closer to God, and we are supposed to act as mentors for people coming after us. And a woman who really exemplifies this is the saint that I'm going to talk to you about today, Saint Syncletica. She did this in her own life. She allowed herself to be mentored by others, and she became a great, uh, wise person who led many other people after her to deeper depths of holiness. So Syncletica lived in the 4th century, and her parents were Macedonian, so they came from northern Greece, but they had moved to the city of Alexandria in Egypt because there was a very strong Catholic community there, and they thought to themselves, well, this would be a good place for us to raise our family in the faith. They had four children, so Syncletica had one sister and two brothers, and the whole family was quite wealthy. They did very well for themselves. And so from the time Syncletica was very little, she was taught how to pray, how to love God. Faith was very important for her family. And it was especially important because her family had to go through two major struggles, and it was their faith in God that kept them rooted through these difficulties. One of these struggles was the fact that Syncletica's sister was blind. And so the family had to take uh, really special care of her because of her disability, especially because in the time that they lived, there was not a lot of aid or accessibility for people who were born blind. And another uh, really major struggle that the family had to go through together was that Syncletica's brother had died when he was very young, leaving only three siblings surviving. And so because of these difficulties, their family had to learn how to put their trust in God, even when things seemed to be going so wrong. And so Syncletica really learned how to pray from her parents, and she loved it. She had a deep love for God. She loved to spend time with him. And she especially was asking God in these times of prayer what he wanted her to do with the rest of her life. She wondered, what will become of me? What is God calling me to do? She knew that she was expected to live a normal life, which for a woman at the time meant to get married one day and to start a family. But for some reason, she felt like God had some other plan for her, something special that he was calling her to. Well, Syncletica was about to get the answer to her prayer, uh, primarily because of some family drama that was about to go down in her house. Maybe you think that you have a dramatic family. Wait till you hear what happened in Syncletica's family. Because her older brother, when he was 25 years old, was pressured into getting engaged to this girl by his parents. They wanted him to get married. They thought they found the right woman for him and, and set it up. But he didn't actually love her. He didn't actually want to marry her. And so right before the ceremony, 
he ran away. He basically abandoned his bride to be at the altar, which wasn't a good move. He probably should have told her earlier, but he didn't want to marry her. And so he ran away and he, he said to his parents, I don't want to marry anyone. I decide that I am going to live my life as a monk. I'm going to devote my whole life to prayer with God, which threw the whole family into utter chaos. But Syncletica wasn't as shocked by her brother's decision. In fact, she thought to herself, now there's an idea. That's something that I could do. I can go off and imitate my brother and live as a monk. I won't get married to anyone. I will live my life completely devoted to God. And when she told her parents that, they said to her, that's crazy. It's crazy enough that your brother did it when a man does it, but there isn't even a system for women to go off and become monks. This isn't something that is done. No, 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 no. What you have to do is you just have to stay at home. You'll forget about this crazy idea of yours when we find you the right guy. But Sincletica had her mind made up. Her brother had inspired her and she wanted to become a monk. But her parents began to panic when she remained resolved in her decision because they wanted grandchildren. Remember, their one son had died. The other one had ran away from his fiance and become a monk. And their only other daughter was blind. And they knew that no man would want to marry a a woman who was blind, at least not in that culture. And so Syncletica was their last chance to keep the family line alive. So what they did is they decided that they would try to distract their daughter from her plans. So they talked amongst themselves and they said to themselves, okay, our daughter, Syncletica, she just needs to pray less and to get out into the world and meet a guy by hanging out with friends her own age. And so they gave Syncletica tons of money and sent her off on shopping trips with her friends to go and buy clothes because they thought that will convince her, but she wasn't distracted like the other girl she was with. She just wasn't interested in that. They sent her off to concerts to go and hear music. But when she came home, all she talked about was going off and becoming a monk and living in silence. And many, many men were interested in in Syncletica. She was very beautiful. She came from a rich family. She was the only heiress of that family. But she rejected all of them. She kept saying, I want all my love to go to Jesus. I don't want to marry any of you. It's not that you're bad guys. I just want to spend my life loving Jesus alone. And her parents begged her over and over again, sometimes in tears, Syncletica, give up on your plans. But she was convinced that God was calling her to live completely and totally for him, consecrated to him. Now her parents were meaning, well, I don't want to paint them in a bad picture, Uh, They raised her in the faith. You know, they made some real sacrifices in moving from Macedonia to, to Alexandria. They'd been through a lot of trials in their life. But like any earthly parents, they weren't perfect. They weren't uh, always going to get it right all the time. Even the best of parents fail sometimes. And they were trying to control her vocation instead of letting her be free in going where God was calling her to go. And to the very end, they tried to convince her to get married But when both of her parents had died and she had inherited their whole estate, she was finally free to follow the Lord's call to go off and be a monk. And she talked about it with her sister first, her sister who was blind. um, And her sister actually had the exact same desire. She had the same desire to go and live a life devoted, consecrated completely to the Lord. And so the two sisters sold everything they have. They gave all the money from their estate to the poor. And then they went to a bishop and asked him for permission to be a female monk. Now, this was not usual back then. It was not something that was normally done, but the bishop agreed to it. And as a symbol that Syncletica was no longer going to seek the attention of any men, what she did is she cut off all of her beautiful hair and she threw out all of her makeup to show that she wasn't going to try to look good for anyone on earth. She was going to spend her life completely focused on living for Jesus, her new spiritual spouse. So she went to live in an empty tomb, which is it's pretty dark if you think about it. It's a little creepy, but she was serious. She, she didn't want to be around people. She wanted to go where no one else would go and follow her. 
And so she went to this tomb that belonged to one of her relatives. And this was to especially remind her of her own death, that she wasn't living for this world, but she, she was living for the life that is to come in heaven. And she lived in that tomb with her sister for many years. And she spent her life in intense prayer. She would spend long hours talking with God, learning how to hear his voice speaking back to her. She wouldn't speak with anyone else. She wanted her only words, her only communication to be coming from God. And she would spend a lot of her time fasting, fasting from food, fasting from uh, things that she thought tasted good because she wanted to remind her body through physical hunger that her soul had a spiritual hunger for the presence of God alone. And through all this prayer, through all this fasting, Syncletica really advanced in the spiritual life and became very holy and very wise in the ways of God. So much so that her reputation began to spread and other women who had heard about this, this holy monk living in the tombs came to her to ask her for spiritual advice and for wisdom. And they asked her, you know, how do I pray when I have such a busy house to take care of? I have children that need to be fed. I have, I have a husband. I have relationships with my family that are, that are difficult. How do I get close to God when I feel so distant from him because I'm trying to provide for my family? And even though Syncletica deep down wanted to live alone, just her and Jesus, her heart went out to these women. And she began to mentor them in how to become saints themselves in their own way of living. She taught them that prayer is not just for monks to do, that uh, they could not live alone in a tomb like her and spend all of her day in prayer, but that they could still grow close to God through serving their family out of love for him. She taught them how to live out the teachings of Jesus in their own life, with their own families, when they were at work, to fight sin to strive for virtue, to love your family, and to love God. That if you do this, gradually you will draw closer to God no matter what situation in life you find yourself in. And she said, it's hard at first, but keep striving to be a saint and it gets easier. I want to read you uh, an actual quote. There's so many things that Syncletica wrote about how to become a saint and, and her advice on how to grow holy. I want to read you one of her quotes just so that you can hear for yourself the wisdom that she would tell these women who gathered around her to learn how to become holy. She said, in the beginning, there is a real struggle and a lot of work for those who come near to God. But after that... There is indescribable joy. It is just like building a fire. At first, it's smoky and your eyes are watering. But later, you get the desired result. And so thus, we ought to light the divine fire in ourselves through our tears and with effort. Isn't that beautiful? I love how she uses examples from their everyday lives. Every single woman in that crowd would have known how to light a fire, how to start the daily fire to, to, to warm the house and to start cooking food. And she used an analogy of something that all of them were familiar with to help them understand how it is to draw closer to God. I'll share with you one more quote from her. She was teaching them how to be careful of wanting others to see how hard they were working because the holier you, you get, the more tempted you are to pry that you're so much better than other people and you want other people to notice. And so she said this, just as treasure that is exposed loses its value, so a virtue which is known vanishes. And just as wax melts when it's near fire, so the soul is destroyed by praise and loses all the results of its labor. Again, using very tangible, earthy language that they could understand, that they could resonate with. And she is describing how they are not to be proud of their virtue, but that they should hide it in humility, letting it be a secret treasure between them and God. Now, some of the women who were unmarried, who were listening to the words of Syncletica, they wanted to become monks just like her. And so they left the world behind to join her in community. And together, these women lived a life of prayer and extreme poverty. They poured out their love on Jesus alone as their heavenly husband. And the name that they gave to Syncletica was Mother. 
They called her Mother Syncletica, as she truly was their spiritual mom, teaching them by word and example how to live a saintly life. And this was something she had never planned. She had never planned to start a community. It wasn't very common in the church at this time for women to be monks like this. But the Holy Spirit used her, used her to create a beautiful community of women who were totally devoted to God. And she never let any of this go to her head. She was true to her own advice. She was humble. She did the lowest chores in the community. She always volunteered for the hardest things to do. She never uh, lorded over the other women in the community because she was their mother, but she lovingly led them closer to God. Now, when Syncletica was 80 years old, she began to undergo really serious health problems that became worse and worse. So first, she contracted a lung disease that when we look at the symptoms and the description of, of her of her illness now, she probably had some kind of lung cancer. And she began to cough up blood. She was in serious internal pain. And she was racked by an extreme fever that never seemed to leave her. So for three and a half years, she struggled with this. And then she developed a tooth infection that spread into her jaw until the very bone of her jaw itself began to waste away and to rot. And a gaping sore opened up in her cheek, which is just as painful and as grisly as it sounds. It smelt horrible. Uh, she could barely speak. She was in terrible suffering. And yet, in all of this pain, Syncletica never complained. She never complained. She offered up her suffering to God as a way to be even more closely united to her beloved Jesus who had suffered for her. She loved Jesus so much that she wanted her life to look like his. And if that meant suffering like he did on the cross, she was willing to do it. So she suffered in this way for three long months. She barely was able to eat any food. She could barely sleep. The other sisters who lived with her were horrified by her sufferings, but she just kept praying. She never gave up on Jesus, even in the midst of all of this pain and suffering. And then one day in prayer, Jesus spoke very clearly to her and told her the day and even the exact time that he would come to her and bring her sufferings to an end. And she was so excited. She was so excited to go finally to Jesus, the one who she loved so much. And she told her sisters, Jesus is coming to take me to heaven in three days. She told them the exact time. And true to her word, she died on the exact day and time that she predicted and went into the joy of heaven forever, leaving behind the sufferings that she had endured for so long. Now, Syncletica exemplifies in her life the principle of finding good mentors to help you become a saint. Because when she was growing up and she didn't know what to do with her life, she looked up to her older brother and his desire, his decision to become a monk. And in conversation with him, in, in looking at his life, she imitated him in his holiness, in his love for God, and she imitated him totally in leaving the world behind to go and become a monk, eventually even starting her own community in giving herself totally to God. She modeled her life in many ways after him, her older brother, who she looked up to. And then in turn, when she was a monk living in the tombs, she became a model for other women who were immature in their faith like she had been, and she showed them how to become saints. And they modeled their lives after her walking in her footsteps in order to draw closer to God. She modeled the Christian life by her words, her words of wisdom, where she taught the women how to be humble, how to pray, how to persevere through trials, how to love people even when they were difficult to love. She, she shared all of these words of wisdom with them, but then she also backed up her words by modeling with her actions, by her very life, that the way she lived her life showed them how to live a life that is completely devoted to God through her prayer, through her fasting, through her resilience and long suffering in enduring the horrible physical pain of her illness without complaint. She showed them how to offer up their lives as a sacrifice to God. And all three of these aspects of mentoring, spiritual mentorship, are so important. So first, you need to find a model for yourself. 
that you can imitate in order to become a saint. The second thing you need to do is show a good example for others through your own actions to mentor them. And then third, to actually open your mouth to teach and encourage others to pursue God with you. So first, you need to find a model. Second, you need to model for others through your own deeds. And third, you model for others through your own words. Because the reality is, is that we can't live out our faith on our own, right? We can't do it all by ourselves. God wants us to lean on each other in order to draw closer to him like the spiritual family that we are. We're meant to be on this journey together. And all of us have a chance to enter into this double mentorship principle. So first, by finding someone who is wiser than you in the spiritual life, who is more experienced in their faith, who maybe knows more about prayer, knows more about the ways of God than you do. And so humbly approaching that person and learning from them, imitating them, so as to draw closer to God by following their example. And then once you've found a person to do that for, you can then mentor other people by making sure that first of all, your life is being lived in such a way that by your own words, by your own actions, you are modeling for all of those who are looking up to you how to grow in their faith. And so that way, the spiritual life kind of becomes like a train that's all heading towards God. Because when you're following wise and holy people in your life, they are pulling you towards the Lord. And then if you're heading towards the Lord and you're pulling people behind you with you, pulling them behind you to draw closer to God, this whole train of people, all these mentors are being led and leading others closer to the Lord. Now, as I'm speaking about this, maybe someone has already come to your mind who is a real mentor in the faith for you. Someone who you know is modeling the Christian life for you. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a a pastor or someone else who, who really helps you when you're stuck in your faith to get back on track, who's able to share the wisdom of his or her life on how to draw closer to God. So you've probably have already been inspired by people. Their lives have led you closer to Jesus. I can think of mentors in my own life, people like my grandparents who by their deep faith showed me how to draw closer to God. People like my parents who taught me how to pray. Uh, People like older priests who showed me how to live out my vocation. These are all people who have mentored me in my life of faith. But maybe some of you are finding it hard to think of someone who is a mentor in the faith for you. Some of you actually might even be thinking that you don't have too many role models to look up to in your life. Maybe you don't have too many friends or family that are, are really living a life dedicated to Jesus. And so if you're thinking to yourself, I'm stuck. I can't do it. I don't have any mentors. Well, first of all, I encourage you to seek out mentors here on earth that can help you draw closer to God. There are people out there that can do this for you. But even if you don't have them right now and you don't even know where to find them, I don't want you to give up because God has given us the saints. God has given us these heavenly mentors, these older brothers and sisters in the Catholic faith that you can model your life after, that you can ask them for help, and they will teach you how to draw closer to God every single day. Maybe as I I speak about the life of St. Syncletica, maybe I've introduced you to her for a reason. Maybe she is going to be a spiritual mentor for you going forward from this day on. Maybe that's the reason why you're listening into this right now. But for all of us, no matter what state of our life we're in, no matter where we are in our walk with Jesus, all of us can act as mentors for other people. Not as a prideful thing where you're thinking to yourself, I'm more advanced than anyone else. I'm going to be a spiritual mentor. Uh, If you're thinking that way, you probably shouldn't mentor anyone. But it's rather a desire that we have to have others grow in their relationship with Jesus and knowing that what we say and how we act around them can help them do that. There are people in my life that I mentor, that in my own small way, I'm helping them deepen their faith in God. And I love it. I love seeing them grow closer to the Lord. I love seeing them come alive in their faith. I love seeing them learn about the ways of God and and enter into deeper holiness. I love sharing what I've learned from my own mentors that has really helped me and passing it on to them. And this this is a gift from God. This is what God has given us in the church. 
the gift of other believers, the gift of brothers and sisters who can help us grow by mentoring us in our faith. And then we in turn can pass on that gift of faith by mentoring others, all for the purpose of drawing as many people to God as possible. St. Sincletica understood this. That's why she gained inspiration from her older brother and imitated him in leaving the world to focus solely on God. That's why she gathered a group of women about her, teaching them about God through her words, showing them how to become a saint through her own humility, through her own prayerfulness and her sacrificial endurance of deep pain. She knew what it was to be mentored in the faith and to mentor others. So let's pray right now that we would imitate her example and become saints just like she was. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Saint Sincletica, you followed your vocation, even though your parents didn't fully understand what God was calling you to, and even tried to get in your way. So help all of us to stay true to what God is asking of us, no matter what others think. And help all parents, especially any of them who are listening in right now, to allow their children to be free in pursuing God's will for their lives. Rather than saying to themselves, I want my kid to do what I want them to do, teach them to be open to what God wants them to do. St. Sincletica, you suffered greatly in the last years of your life as your body wasted away from cancer and fever and infection. I pray that you would help all those who are seriously sick right now, who are tempted to depression, who are tempted to frustration and hopelessness because of their, of their pain. Let them experience the consolation of the Holy Spirit and help them to unite their sufferings to Jesus on the cross, to offer up their pain to the Lord as a form of prayer rather than seeing it just as meaningless suffering. St. Sincletica, you knew how to be mentored and how to mentor others. Help us to seek out wise and holy models of the Christian life so that we can imitate them and become saints so that we in turn can coach others in how to draw closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Saint Sincletica, pray for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.